are good, you are not getting a quirk. You are quirkless. No quirk, no hero career, nothing. It is pretty much how I learn again. But here's where things divert. What I need to do is watching his most loved All my fight, or at least rescue. Yeah, he cries, just like the cinnamon roll we know him to be. He pretty much lost his friends, or is in some crazy you know, psycho denial. And Inko, of course, hugs him and cries with him. The only thing is, Inko notices something off. She's hugging Izuku and they're both crying at a damn river. She notices that the tears, at least the water they're creating through crying, it's starting to get colder. Before long, she notices that each time her tears start to slowly leave her nail the cheek, it gets frozen solid. And not just her, she sees that Izuku's tears are freezing too. Wondering what the hell's going on, he's also wondering is this his doing? She just backs away from Izuku. Izuku, of course, not knowing why would you back away from me, I thought you were supposed to comfort me, cries more. More tears, more icicles. It's just then when he's a good guy realizes, oh wait, why are my cheeks cold? He looks up at Inko. Inko looks down at him in shock. I think you have the quirk. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you have the quirk. Yeah, I guess it's just freezing things. This causes Izuku to finally feel not only pure happiness, but pure shock is learning that his quirk is nothing like his mom's or dad's. At least what he thinks is a quirk. So when he runs up to Inko, he inadvertently wraps her in a, a thin sheet of water. Though both are completely shocked at this, wondering, did I do that? This gets Izuku more and more interested. And he's not looking at uh, really not knowing what to do here, considering he figured he would either have the fire quirk or the attraction quirk. You know, more a combination, considering his parents. But with it being something related to water, or at least liquids in general, of course he still likes all my but this causes him to need more research on the water-based quirks. Him going over and over, checking and seeing what this is about, how this quirk works. Him realizing, okay, so not only can I somewhat control water, I can also freeze it. What if I could do the opposite? Him turning it into steam and back into water. Inko still there watching this. She's wondering, my stuff has a quirk. But here's the thing. Considering Izuku does think this is a quirk. And considering the fact that he did figure his mom and Dad's quirks would be somewhat of a combination. He has surmised that his new given quirk, which we know as water bending, is a strange mutation in both quirk genes. Where, yes, he's able to gather water or a seemingly kind of liquid. But that was thanks to his mom's quirk. 
when it comes to freezing it and heating it up, turning it into steam, that could be classified as his dad's quarter. When he's freezing it, he's drawing the heat from it, which can be also a subset of Inko's quirk, while making it into steam or water again, can be seen as using his dad's quirk, just not fire breathing. It's pretty much like a, him using science to try to justify this. So yeah, he does see this as a weird way for Borg evolution to go. It's just the fact that he's so happy that he has a quirk now. So next time he goes to school, he's all excited. He's up in arms, happy, trying to tell everyone about, yeah, I have a quirk now. I can be a hero now. Problem is, He's going to tell everyone in his class. He overhears Bakugo bragging about his quirk. Of course, it's Bakugo, but also bad mouthing him to high hell. And of course, the other kids, they don't know that he's, he's a good person and all. He's cool guy to be around. Yeah, Bakugo's technically the... He's tough and tough ball and he's not wrong about... He's taking that being a, able to be a hero without a quirk. At least from their mindset, Deku can't be a hero without having a quirk. They had no faith in him. And Zuku is hearing this. Of course, he's wondering, what the hell, why, why are they saying all this crap about me? Did they just give up on me just because I didn't have a quirk? And of course, this, uh, sparks something. Something that is not, not very nice when it comes to Izu, his mindset. He was heartbroken when he found out he was quirkless. He knew that his friends and classmates saw him differently, especially with all that spouting of him wanting to be a, a great hero, even possibly the number one. Hell, it was his and Bakugo's dream for this to be out in the open, how they really feel about him now. Considering that he's quirkless? Yeah. Is that he found out that uh, not everyone's your friend. <laughs> it must be your own people that cause your downfall. So, of course, he pretends he didn't hear a word. I'll go. Of course, he still acts all arrogant like he would normally do, especially as a child. But he knows that something's off when Izuku is somewhat quiet. He does notice the red around his eyes. Just here, you know, oh, yeah, huh. he's probably upset because he still doesn't have to work and he's just crying. He's just been crying this whole time. Yeah. He's not wrong, but yeah, it was for a different reason. But here's the thing. Zuku is very quiet. Not timid quiet. More like a loner. Kind of someone who just doesn't want to be bothered. Just wants to go about their day. This, of course, isn't something that they're used to. They expected him to at least try talking to Bakugo. And for him just to be all tight-lipped, that's not the Izuku that they know. And this would be right around the time where he gets his nickname, Deku. Of course, 
or Izuku being, you know, pretty much taunted, bullied like this, belittled, because he doesn't have a quirk. Yeah, he he really has to like the name Deku here. Just to the point where he uh, he was wondering. He wasn't diagnosed quirkless. Would he have been the same as them? Would he have been looking down on quirkless people who wanted to be heroes or just be complete arrogant assholes? Yeah, that that's been always in his mind lately. So whenever he's not playing with with his friends, or at least pretty much isolating himself willingly, he's actually training his water bending, which is a lot harder considering the and the water bending style. You know, in Avatar: The Last Airbender, is you know, they it is a you need to learn some uh, martial arts. Of course, he doesn't know this, but hell, he does realize, yeah, I'm going to need a fighting style to help me whenever there's no water or help me control what I do have. Someone to help me gauge the full force of my potential, or at the very least, Make sure I don't drown anyone by accident. So, of course, Nico, she enrolls him in a lot of martial arts classes. She does register his quirk and everything. Even to the point where she does inform the school that, yeah, he does have a quirk. The only thing is, Izuku tells her to make them promise that no one within his class knows about it. Of course, he goes wondering why. Not knowing that he's even knows his friends aren't really his friends. So, she, though curious, listens to them. Principal wonders, okay, so you don't plan on using this new quirk to, you know, during class or anything? You know, only during training. What? Yeah, I'm just going to use it when I train. Here. You know, quirk uses it. I know, I'm not going to use it during school. Hmm. Well, that's that. There's nothing else to worry about. As this is how the years go by. Up until the start of the anime, Izuku has, of course, gotten far more proficient in using his quirk. Hell, I'll go. Still wanting to be somewhat of an ass, does try to use Izuku as a punching bag. Or at the very least, quirk practice. Since no one else in his class knows about his quirk, or anything, now even only really the teacher knows. And he is actually impressed by that Izuku. Doesn't go off on him. Fuck and go. Let alone the students. When they. They don't really bully him, they're just pretty much bystanders when it comes to his, his uh, ridicule. The only thing is, the teacher actually tries to, to curb some of this. He knows see, that's a quirk, of course, but he's, he's always like, wow, this is what they're like when he doesn't have powers? 
Yeah, the teacher is not an ass. So, of course, Doggo tries to blow up into his notebook. After reading that, wait, what's all, what's all these notes for? Yeah, instead of it being just full of hero notes or tactics on how Bakugo can just squirt or anything, he may still have those. Because he has to still put up this facade of an actual court order, which he kind of is, just not to the same extent. But when Bakugo finally gets to the whole how to use my water quirk, or the ways he has learned how to use it when it comes to freezing, warming up the water, manipulating it, Hugo is a Horse wondering, what the hell? He's looking at Izuku while, of course, he's pretty much giving back my notebook. I'll go just I'm trying to. Nah, nah, he, he can't have a quirk. He tries to blow up a notebook again. One well, problem is, it doesn't work. He's wondering, wait, why why isn't my quirk working? Why can't I spark? Why, why can't I blow up this damn notebook? As then everyone in the class, the teacher, as well as the other students and classmates, you know, they're looking up right above Bakugo. Girl. Uh, Bakugo is still trying to blow up the notebook. He may be able to spark it up his palms, but without the night of and sweat, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you can really do. What, what? What are you guys looking at? Of course, he's wondering why y'all staring at me. Him noticing that looking up, he sees a giant bubble filled with what he first presumed to be water. This is when he looks down at Yuzuku, wondering. Wait, you're doing this? Yeah. Where did you get all this water from? That's not water. This is when it hits Bakugo like a ton of bricks. Like, if that's not water, and I haven't been able to use my quirk. Yeah, he has no choice but to book it, because as soon as Zuku drops it, it spills all over him. Only problem is, when he wants to fight Izuku, he, he, he knows he can't. So not only is he doused in his nitroglycerin sweat, it's a lot. Of it. This is a large amount. And he knows one spark, he's gonna light that all up once. Not only injuring him, but injuring anyone else in the vicinity. So, yeah, he has to make a real choice here. Does he risk it? And hopefully, it's all for the best. Or does he sit down like a good Pomeranian? And of course, he's flabbergasted to the whole point that Izuku has had a quirk this whole time. All the other students are looking at him, wondering, how long have you had this quirk? Uh, soon after I was diagnosed quirkless. Why don't you tell anyone? Why would I? This is when you look at Bakugo, because as far as I know, he and Izuku were tight as friends. At least the youngins. But now, you didn't know this either? No. 
Of course not. How, how, how would I know? And of course... The, wait... That day... You, you heard us what we said. Didn't you? Oh yeah. Heard all of it. That's why you didn't tell anyone about your quirk. Oh no. Uh, I told people. Just not everyone. I mean, I I got reevaluated. So, and everything. I mean, you can't really keep this a secret. At least not from everybody. This is when he looks at the teacher and the teacher is just nodding his head like, mm hmm. Each, why didn't you tell us anything? But he didn't want any of you to know. He would just rather be in your eyes quirkless. So you should have kept your mouth shut and left him alone. You can only imagine the mouth fear and anger Sibu has instilled in poor, poor Bakuyokaski. Much to the point where he's a. If he can do this to me, just take away my s sweat. S just a large portion of what makes me powerful. He's he's made me to be quirkless. I have no power over it here. He's even has a sly smile as it finally really set in for Bakugo. So finally realize it. Yes. Of course, everyone else is wondering what is he talking about. Zuko so would be more than happy to say, I can take away his sweat. I can pretty much control any liquid I want. At least, not all of it. <sighs> but yeah, at the very least. When it comes to your quirks, if it's water based, and you're fighting me, <laughs> you're basically quirkless. But yeah, Bakugo, of course, is terrified knowing how helpless he would be when it comes to Izuku. Izuku is relishing this. Because even though he had the whole thing about payback, this said this to turn the other cheek or anything. Yeah, screw that. This was a long time coming. It feels great. I mean, come on. It's one thing for Izuku to have everyone know about his quirk and everything, but to really let them know. How overpowered he is, he decides to do a demonstration. Bakugo, still, as mad as he is, he does not want to risk blowing himself up right now. As he's about to just run in, charge at Izuku, this is when Izuku just lifts up his hand and extracts every bead of sweat. That he recently doused on the Bakugo. Shocking everyone. Again, but how are you this proficient in your work? I've had that practice. Again, that doesn't stop Bakugo from charging at him. So when he goes into punch Izuku, he uses Bakugo's own sweat to create yeah, a water shield. 
long ago, first off, this was no big deal considering, heck, it's liquid. How dense could it be? Realizing that his fist is starting to hurt. But then, he wonders, okay, so it's worse than I thought. But then he goes, I See what else I can do? As again, he starts drawing in more moisture. Not from the air, but from other students who just so happen to have water based quirks as well. As he starts to slowly have those individual droplets start to surround Bakugo. Of course, first Bakugo is like, okay, so what, what's the big deal here? You're just gonna cover me in water or something? What's this? That's not so scary. Because he starts to notice how cold it's getting. He starts to feel as think of it as a dulled down version of Sub Zero freezing Jack's arms. It's Bakugo's whole body. But it's just not completely freezing him. That's why Zivuzin decided to do to really flex on him. Of course, everyone's wondering, wow, you are a lot more powerful than we ever could have thought, especially with this quirk. And yeah, Bob goes like, okay, so you can freeze and control, wait a minute. I could do a lot more than that. And with the snap of his fingers, he completely evaporates all the water droplets. He makes it scorching hot to the point where, yeah, you know, Buckingham will change colors. Yeah, he gets scolded. And not by his mom this time. Of course, everyone doesn't want to make where he's anymore. And he gets to go home with his head held high, knowing that, yeah, he let them know that he is not one to be messed with. Of course, he feels great about this. He's been waiting for years to show off his power. So he does wish he could have been friends with Bakugo if only Bakugo is such a arrogant asshole. So he sees this as a good teaching moment. <sighs> and of course, Sludge Pillow. Though it does try to attack Izuku, he can sense that Sludge Pillow is actually there due to the Sludge being semi liquid. So before Sludge can actually grab hold of him, he stops it dead in his tracks. And also wondering, okay, so what who, who are you? What do you what do you want? But, uh, So, what you were trying to? I was gonna hold you hostage, but huh, like, why? In comes All Might. Though Izuku is a fan of All Might, he's not. He's not as big a fan as he used to be. If anything, he sees All Might as a somewhat of a means to an end. He does still get autograph, and he and she does get. Thanks from All Might for catching the sludge villain with his amazing quirk. So yeah, he said we had a good day. No need to worry about us like a sludge villain incident. As you can take care of it. All Might, we got rid of the sludge villain. And all that. All is well ends well. When it comes for 10 months of training, 
He simply does beef up his usual routine. Especially considering he wants to go to UA. He very at least wants to try it with different liquids. He knows he can control his tears, his sweat, all those other things. Here, fresh water, salt water, don't really matter. Hell, soda. I mean, seriously, you have no idea how much fun it will be to just, huh, you know what? Yeah, I'm on Mountain Dew. Just have a can that will take towards you, thanks to water bending. So, yeah, you can just imagine. It's you who wants to know how much farther you can go. So, he tries with different liquids, such as oil. As well as, of course, something more barbaric. Just going for blood. Sadly, he can only control the blood when it's on the outside, and that itself is an, after an ungodly amount of concentration. He can only really make one drop levitate somewhat. It's not for me. a real lack of talent or anything else. It's just that blood is uh, it's got a lot going on. So, of course, he decides to put that whole blood bending thing on the back burner. When he finally realized, yeah, he can control a whole heap of liquids, he really does wonder like, how great is this control? Because one thing for certain, he has noticed that when the moon is out, especially during full moons, he feels a whole heap stronger. So, when the next full moon arrives, he decides to see how much stronger the moon makes him, which causes him to create one hell of a tidal wave. And, yeah, of course, he tries walking on water, creating pockets of, of air by moving the water away from him. Using the water as floating discs so he can walk on air. Only thing is, yeah, he can do all that when it comes to the full moon. When it's not the full moon, let alone <laughs> not even at night, yeah, he notices his uh, power cut is quite hefty. Though, yes, he still has a fair amount of power, he can't clash with other tidal waves here. Though, so, yeah, he does see it. So, he realize, okay, so if I, if I want to be able to prevent tsunamis, I'm really going to either need a full moon, or I'm going to need to do a whole a lot more training. Given his determination, especially now, he has a one hell of a interesting power. Of course, he wants to be very, very tough to beat. This actually causes him to learn more of people with ice-based or steam-based powers. Which also causes him to have a little dive into a certain someone's background, aka Endeavor. Here, learning that his wife does have ice based abilities, he's actually curious and starts writing letters to Endeavor 
course, Endeavor always gets bad mail. I mean, he is a hero. But we he uh, realizes he was asking about his wife's quirk. For the very least, he is very curious on the scale of which she can utilize it. Well, how does she utilize it? Of course, he's like... Huh. A wife who is in the psychiatric ward actually somewhat has fan mail. I did not anticipate this. So, yeah. Considering he, this is still his asshole self with no redemption, of course he starts looking at Shoto. Hmm. I don't know anything about her power, but my son? Okay, I, I can do something with that. So, at the very least, he actually gives the letter to Shoto. Oh, so, what are you doing this endeavor? I know nothing about your ice space abilities that you've got for your mom. So, I cannot answer this boy. So, you shall do it. Why? That's his up. Why? I'm your father. Debatable. Joto, please. I'm actually curious about this boy. Not my problem. <laughs> Here you will. It is, yeah. He never does have a little meltdown. But he comes on pretty damn fast and gets her. Oh, wait. If this kid ends up going to the same school as Shoto, in the same class, hmm. At them having ice based abilities as well would also mean that they could be on par with Shoto's ice side, forcing him to use my fire. So, yeah, of course, Endeavor is already starting to get a bit of interest because of Izuku. Shoto upon learning about Izuku's interest in his mom's quirk does bring you back some painful memories. But also, he's wondering, so they must have an ice space quirk too. And just like a Dever, except Shoto, of course, he thinks, wait, this could be a way for me actually strengthen my ice quirk or at least see how far I've come this is fearing I don't really have that many people to fight with who have the same powers as me huh yeah yeah this this could be great so of course he starts to tell to do everything that he can really do with his quirk, at least his ice side. Him getting uh, kind of carried away. Getting more in depth into how much he prefers using it to fire. He's getting the letter back. He's, of course, wondering, okay, so this is weird. I got what I wanted, but. Just getting kind of personal. Eh, oh well. Or at least this sure as hell gonna help me in the future. When he learns that, oh wait, really? Huh. Glaciers. 
I never thought of that. Wait, 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 no. Why don't be different? I can't make my old bar the same way that he can. Huh, I need a that side source. Huh. Oh well. I might have to just find some other way to work with that. I mean, the planet's mostly covered in water to begin with. I'm sure I can find some source. So, yeah. He's going to continue just trading. But so, something, uh, something happens. Unexpectedly. Yeah, he runs into a hero versus villain fight. But of course, this being me, I have to do it. It is the fight with Muscular and the Water Hose Heroes. Siku is, of course, losing his damn mind. Because not only are these some of the heroes that he's actually researched and studied, but they are up against a real powerhouse. Someone who may not be as strong as All Might, but someone who is definitely someone who can be. He would be very good material for when it comes to fighting power based villain. Of course, he stays out of the way and everything. I'm trying to study and see how far this where he goes. But it's the fact that he sees the Water Hose heroes start to lose. So like he starts to really get nervous. And just before the final punch is uh, thrown, he can't do it. He, he, he has to do something. Just then, Muscular starts to realize, wait, why is it so cold all of a sudden? As Izuku, wearing a ski mask, looks at him, muscular, and tells him to step away from the heroes. Of course, he knows him. Okay. Um, excuse me, sweetie voice child. Of course, Izuku tries to use his deeper voice, but it doesn't really work. Oh, first real villain fight in his life. Once again, let's go, of course, let it go. Are you trying to die too? Listen, I'll give you a chance. Walk away. You do that, everything's good. You don't, I will kill you. I have no qualms about killing anyone. So, choose wisely. Please, I'll give you to the counter, but as he just throws a punch, he has a smug grin on his face until he realizes he just punched a solid ice wall. He's wondering, what the hell? He sees how thick it actually is, wondering, wait, what are those two heroes I was just about to kill? As they're right behind Izuku. While he was building the wall, he also decided to use excess water to slowly slide them behind him. Of course, they're telling him to get out of here, but also thanking him for buying some time for them to rest. But Izuku is like, buy you time? No, 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 no. I'm finishing this fight. And of course, they're looking like, are you kidding me? Then a news crew shows up. While other heroes decide to finally show themselves ready to fight. But the only thing is, Izuku is throwing them hands. He's, he's training as he's fighting muscular. Training in the fact that he's starting to make constructs out of water and ice. First, he makes a 
solid ice gauntlet on one hand and a water one on the other as he is boxing with muscular muscular is loving this actually because even though yes he's a lot stronger than he's physically it's the fact that he's a goof is still getting back up no matter how many times he gets tossed in through this whole fight. Every punch, he's gonna of course risk breaking his damn arm, but he just won't stop. Muscular is of course wondering why are you still fighting knowing that you cannot beat me in a full on fight. As time goes by, let's say five, 10 minutes. So this Izuku, he is of course exhausted. Muscular, he's like, I can do this all day. But one thing he didn't realize is like, why is it so cold? As he tries to brush it off, of course, and throw another punch. Only problem is, his arm is a lot slower and starting to get stiff. Of course, what can I say is muscle fibers, you can't reveal those as intensely. But then, when it comes to his actual joints, his hands and arms beneath them, he knows his whole freezing cold. Then he remembers Izuku's ice wall. And that, yeah, he's been using a water and ice gauntlet to fight him head to head. So he's wondering, what'd you do to me? Because he gets colder and colder. Him wondering, why is this happening? Knowing that this kid has something to do with it. But it's only when he's completely immobilized. When he's a goof and finally he takes a knee. I can't believe that worked. Everyone else, of course, is wondering what is he talking about? As he just stands up and starts walking towards muscular. Like nobody's business. And he just snaps. Off a piece of muscular, so, yeah, plus the fibers, just showing that yeah, he's been slowly soaking muscular in water, just enough so he would notice, but enough so I could freeze it whenever I wanted. It just took a lot to keep him from, you know, breaking me. Of course, everyone's looking at Zuko like, you, you froze him within his own quirk. Of course, Muscular's teeth are chattering as he curses Zuko's name. But if they should finally get through, they commend Izuku for his bravery as well as his help in apprehending the villain. They also scold him considering, of course, they realize that he is not a pro hero. You know Izuku is disheartened to be scolded, but he's also beyond happy with the fact that, hey, I saved these people, not just look at the bystanders, but also the heroes, especially the water hose heroes, who are still recovering. They are wide awake. They just get really moved. They get our previous fight with muscular. Brad, right, just to show some more humbility. Oh my god! Yeah, I am back. I'm starting to make up damn words again. <clears throat> 
he does tell, say to the whole crowd that, yeah, he wouldn't have been able to do this much if it wasn't for them and their efforts to thwart him to begin with. In fact, he gives a lot of credit to them considering if it weren't for them being on the scene, who knows who, who else muscular would have come across. And probably it wouldn't have even been a hero. Probably he's a normal civilian. Or if it was just a regular old worthless person. And of course, you can just imagine this humble nature of Izuku's is very like wow, you are going to make a great hero when you grow up. What what school are you going to? Oh, UA. Uh well, seems spinning. This is just a four more solar wound. Uh, this is live TV. Baku is home, as well as pretty much anyone who will be watching the news just to pick on hero culture or anything. Yeah, you can just imagine how pissed Baku is realizing he beat a villain. He's getting all this publicity before he's even a pro hero. He saved pro heroes. Despite them being weak as hell, he still saved them and he beat a... I actually don't know how strong Muscular is, but he won. Fuck this, I am not falling behind that asshole. Bongos. Still not being up to the same strength as he would, would be in canon, but still a force to be working with. So, that would be the end of the whole uh, 10 months training. No All Might, no one for all, just as if training his water bending to the best of his ability. Ingo, upon learning and seeing him on the news, of course, is terrified for her son. Also, she knows how formidable he is. So, this does help curb her fears as a mother. Eh, a little bit. No, we're good. Especially considering he still wants to be a hero. But. She's a lot more supportive, at least. All my seeing is, of course, he applauds Izuku. Izuku's. Huh. I'm looking forward to seeing how he develops at my school. The day of the interest as I am. Of course, Izuku, though nervous, he is ready for this. He's trained enough to the point where he knows exactly. What he's gonna do. Of course, the railboat exam. He's able to be able to actually balance his training with his studying. Actually, does pretty well. Doesn't get a perfect score, of course, but he still doesn't have to worry about failing that part. Because of the practical, realizing that wait, these are robots. Izuku just can't help but smile ear to ear as he's getting hella excited now. So one of the things he made sure that he was actually proficient in was oil, that little motor oil. He was actually about to ask Prison Mike what kind of oil to use just to make sure he didn't end up practicing with the right kind. But he. He decides to go against it. At the very least, he does want to try out some new stuff that he's started to learn. Well, 
as you can imagine, Izuku being super excited and him knowing present Mike, who his whole work research, and pretty much his quirk and greediness. He is not wait for her might say go or anything. He just decides to yeah, use what sweat he's gathered as well as sweat of the students or his candidates and rip through those doors. Ida, of course one to be a nosy bastard, wants to scold his go, but prison minds and yeah, I was gonna say go. Y'all both lost y'all this style uh, failed y'all test. Walk with that boy. But the only thing is, Izuku doesn't know where to start with this. If anything, he's more anxious because there are robots almost everywhere. And he doesn't really know how to really take each one of them down. Yes, there's water there, so yeah, ice spikes and everything. But one thing he wants to do, for sure, is command them. But first, he needs to make sure he at least acquires enough points so he can at least get into UA. So, of course, he absorbs just enough water, draws just enough out just so he can pierce a whole heap of robots. In fact, thanks to his proficiency, he's actually able to use water to sway from building to building. Even being able to use it and power bomb through several robots with a pretty, pretty strong ice javelin. Everyone, of course, is wondering what the hell, how is he doing this? What is his quirk? Prison Mike, of course, being the announcer that he is, has no problem disclosing that. Oh yeah, he has pure hydrokinesis. And yeah, you can imagine the shock on their faces. Like, wait, that doesn't make any, make any sense. Yay, you draw water, but that's ice. He's using two. You can control the temperature of this? This is not only Daisy Zuku a lot of villain points, but considering that he's really on a roll here, yeah, he ends up saving a lot of people, also gaining hero points. Of course. Zuku being the way he is, he is just loving every second of it. He doesn't have time to really stay and say they're okay right now. Or at least, he needs to get more points. He's got time is going down faster and faster the more robots he takes down. This prompts Nezuzu. Okay. Time for the zero pointer. But, but, Nezu, sir, uh, I don't think he can handle it. Let's see what he can really do. Let's see if he runs like the other younglings or if he stands up to it and fights it. It should be quite the spectacle. Of course. Everyone else is looking at him crazy, wondering, do you really want to just good luck? Yeah, of course it could happen. We do have quite the selection of formidable heroes to step in. And of course, the stop button is right next to the start one, so there should be no harm. Yeah, they still look at him like he's crazy, but they still allow him to release a zero pointer. Izuku, of course, he hears it. And 
as you can imagine, he definitely wants to run like everyone else. The only problem is that he realizes someone's trapped. That voice to him is all too familiar. As he turns his head and it utters, Sue?